welcome to the Deliverance Network. We're back again filming after a hiatus of a few weeks. It's been obviously quite cold here in Canada, lots of snow. And so we've not brought anything to you for several weeks now since sharing quite a bit with you before Christmas and at the Christmas season. So we're happy to be back bringing new content to you in 2022. And as part of our filming, I wanted to share with you today something that has come my way recently. It's something that's been known of for quite some time. And you may have heard of it, but I'm going to share it. It's Prophecies of Our Lady of Good Success and how it references it we believe at least our times and the information I'm going to share is from a website you can look it up yourself it is www.tfp.org that's T as in Tom F as in Frank and P as in Peter dot org and it's the American Society for the Defense of Tradition Family and Property and this uh, article is from April the 19th 2000 from that website and it, I really wanted to bring it to you because it really speaks about a prophecy, church approved, um, I believe it was in Quito, Ecuador, prophecies that were given to a Spanish nun. And I'm going to just read this quickly to you because I believe it really is our times that these prophecies refer to. And it says, during the 15th and 16th centuries, Our Lady of Good Success appeared in Quito, Ecuador, to a Spanish nun whose little known but extraordinary life has a direct connection with our days. The Pope's infallibility will be declared a dogma of faith by the same Pope chosen to proclaim the dogma of the mystery of my Immaculate Conception. He will be persecuted and imprisoned in the Vatican through the usurpation of the pontifical states and through the malice, envy, and avarice of an earthly monarch. Unbridled, and this is the prophecies given, unbridled passions will give way to a total corruption of customs because Satan will reign through the Masonic sects, targeting the children in particular to ensure general corruption. Unhappy, the children of those times. Seldom will they receive the sacraments of baptism and confirmation. And as for the sacrament of penance, they will confess only while attending Catholic schools, which the devil will do his utmost to destroy by means of person in authority. The same will occur with Holy Communion, Oh, how it hurts me to tell you that there will be many and enormous public and hidden sacrileges. In those times, the sacrament of extreme unction, I believe it's known as the sacrament of the sick in the Catholic Church, will be largely ignored. Many will die without receiving it, being thereby deprived of innumerable graces, consolation and strength in the great leap from time to eternity. The sacrament of matrimony, which symbolizes the union of Christ with the church, will be thoroughly attacked and profaned. Masonry, then reigning, will implement iniquitous laws aimed at extinguishing this sacrament, the sacrament of marriage. They will make it easy for all to live in sin, thus multiplying the birth of illegitimate children without the church's blessing. And again, I'm passing along a message that was given to this visionary, uh, definitely not something that I am saying myself. Secular education will contribute to a scarcity of priestly and religious vocations. We're definitely seeing that now. The holy sacrament of holy orders will be ridiculed, oppressed, and despised. For in this, both the church and God himself are repressed and reviled since he is represented by his priests. The devil will work to persecute the ministers of the Lord in every way, working with baneful cunning to destroy the spirit of their vocation and corrupting many. Those who will thus scandalize the Christian flock will bring upon all priests the hatred of bad Christians and the enemies of the one holy Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church. Pretty strong words we're hearing here. This apparent triumph of Satan will cause enormous suffering to the good pastors of the church and to the supreme pastor and vicar of Christ on earth who, a prisoner in the Vatican, will shed secret and bitter tears in the presence of God our Lord, asking for light, sanctity, and perfection for all the clergy of the world, to whom he is king and father. And unhappy times will come wherein those who should fearlessly defend the rights of the church will instead blinded despite the light, give their hand to the church's enemies and do their bidding. But when evil seems triumphant and when authority abuses its power, committing all manner of injustice and oppressing the weak, their ruin shall be near. 
they will fall and crash to the ground. And then the church, joyful and triumphant like a young girl, reawaken and be comfortably cradled in the arms of my most dear and elect son of those times. If he lends an ear to the inspirations of grace, one of which will be the reading of these great mercies that my son and I have had toward you. We shall fill him with graces and very special gifts and will make him great on earth and much greater in heaven. There we have reserved a precious seat for him because heedless of men, he will have fought for truth and ceaselessly defended the rights of the church, deserving to be called martyr. And this is even speaking to the end of the 19th century, let alone our time. At the end of the 19th century and throughout a great part of the 20th, many heresies will be propagated in these lands. The small number of souls, and that is us, of course, the remnant, who will secretly safeguard the treasure of faith and virtues, will suffer a cruel, unspeakable, and long martyrdom. Sometimes that martyrdom is something that is just uh, having to defend your faith or even live it amongst family members who don't believe or understand and who persecute you. So not necessarily red martyrdom. Many will descend to their graves through the violence of suffering and will be counted among the martyrs who sacrifice themselves for the country and the church. To be delivered from the slavery of these heresies, those whom the merciful love of my son has destined for this restoration will need great willpower perseverance, courage, and confidence in God. To try the faith and trust of these just ones, there will be times when all will seem lost and paralyzed. It will then be the happy beginning of the complete restoration. In those times, the atmosphere will be saturated with the spirit of impurity, which, like a filthy sea, will engulf the streets and public places with incredible license. Innocence will scarcely be found in children or modesty in women. He who should speak reasonably will remain silent. There shall scarcely be any virgin souls in the world. The delicate flower of virginity will seek refuge in the cloisters. Without virginity, fire from heaven will be needed to purify these lands. Sects, having permeated all social classes, will find ways of introducing themselves into the very heart of homes to corrupt the innocence of children. The children's hearts will be dainty morsels to regale the devil. Religious communities will remain to sustain the church and work with courage for the salvation of souls. The secular clergy will fall far short of what expected of them because they will not pursue their sacred duty. Losing the divine compass, they will stray from the way of priestly ministry mapped out for them by God and will become devoted to money, seeking it too earnestly. And of course, I'm not speaking here this prophecy about all priests. Obviously, we have many good, faithful, and wonderful priests working in our church in our day. So this is not uh, any way a personal comment regarding the priesthood. Pray constantly, she warns. Implore tirelessly and weep bitter tears in the seclusion of your heart, beseeching the Eucharistic heart of my Most Holy Son to take pity on his ministers and to end as soon as possible these unhappy times by sending to his church the prelate who shall restore the spirit of her priests. And so I just wanted to share that for your discernment today. I really like the part where it speaks about the fact that as you see everything starting to be lost and things are paralyzed and we may be seeing these times unfolding in our church with times to come, it says it will be then, exactly then, that the happy beginning of complete restoration will come. So this is where we must keep up the faith in our hearts, no matter what occurs, keep up our hope, keep up our prayers, particularly in our adherence to the Magisterium, because we are under the mantle of our Blessed Mother, and we are under the protection of God our Father, and if we stay with Jesus, we truly have nothing to fear. And really, it is the safe place, as I've mentioned so many times. So for your discernment, many of these prophecies, you can look this up, Prophecies of Our Lady of Good Success, and check it out yourself. And um, if you'd like to subscribe to us, please do so. Don't forget to like us, share the channel. If you have any comments, feel free to send them our way. And I'm hoping that you are having so far a blessed, healthy, happy 2022.